Hello, my name is Darren Thomas and I am the Director of Educational Research Techniques. In this video, we're going to take a look at how to develop a purpose statement for a research paper, journal article, dissertation thesis, and a, you know, in the social science context. So let's go ahead and see what we can learn. Now let's do a quick review. As you guys are already familiar with, you guys know that research begins with a problem. You know that already. And then you read about the problem and you ask questions about the problem. After you have done this, you then need to figure out, okay, how are you going to answer your questions? Then you're going to actually share your answers and then you're going to explain or interpret your answers. We've talked about this many times. So the section on the problem here, this is going to be your introduction along with the questions. I should have added this as well. Uh, what you read about, this is going to be your review of literature. How you're going to answer your questions, this is your methodology. Your answers, this is going to be your results section. And then your explanation or your interpretation, if you will, what it means, your conclusions, if you will, that's going to be your discussion and conclusion section. This is all review right here. So again, this is your chapter one. Review literature is going to be your chapter two. Methodology is going to be your chapter three. Results your chapter four. And discussion is going to be your chapter five. That's pretty much how it works most of the time within the discipline that of course I come out of, which is social science and primarily when you're writing a dissertation in the education discipline. Now, within your chapter one, there are several components that we've talked about before that we need to make sure we are clear on. So in your chapter one, in your introduction, there's several key parts here. You're gonna have your problem. We discussed that prior, how to write a problem statement you know, justification of the study, background of the study, etc. You're gonna have your purpose statement, which is the star of today's video. You're probably going to have your research questions or objectives or hypotheses, whatever you wanna do. We will deal with that in a future video. You're gonna have your significance. We're gonna talk about this later as well. And then also, let's see here. You're gonna, sometimes it depends on who you're working for, you're gonna have definition of terms. Sometimes, it depends, this might be in your chapter three, or excuse me, chapter two. And then you're also gonna have delimits, I'll just put DL for short, and your limitations. Delimitations and limitations. Sometimes this is in chapter one, whoops, excuse me. Sometimes it's not, they might move these. It really depends on who you're working with. As I mentioned in a prior video, where you put something is not as important as whether or not you actually include it. So you have to think about the traditions of the school you're at, the preferences of your advisor or teacher or journal, and how things are done within that context. But I think we all agree on what exactly needs to be there, maybe not necessarily where it should be at. Now, our focus today is gonna be right here on the purpose statement. And the purpose statement is where you set out the goal or the mission of your paper. And the best way to learn this is to look at an example. So in the upper left hand corner, we have an example here of a purpose statement. So the purpose of this paper is to identify factors that explain academic dishonesty. So this is fairly, fairly clear. Um, basically I'm laying out a promise to try to explain academic dishonesty with other factors or variables, if you will. And so one thing you'll notice is that a purpose statement does not have to be very long. It can be, you know, one sentence. It doesn't have to be very, very complex or complicated, but you need to clearly lay out, this is my promise. This is what I'm going to do in this paper. And so another thing you want to keep in mind is that you almost always, again, I'm talking from a quantitative perspective, you almost always want to include your dependent variable or your main variable in your purpose statement. So 
the academic dishonesty is the star of this paper. I am going to try to, and uh, you can see right here, I'm going to try to explain it, all right? Now, one thing that I do, and again, I'm not saying everybody should do this, is that I don't talk about the independent variables too much in the study. I summarize all the independent variables just using the word factor. This is my shortcut. So I could put in here all the different variables I'm using to explain academic dishonesty, but you want to keep it short and sweet and succinct when you are trying to develop your purpose statement. At least this is what I've discovered over years of publishing. And so you can see it's not that complicated, but many students um, struggle with how to do this. One other thing that you often see in a purpose statement, and again, this is just more my style than something that's required, is some sort of an infinitive phrase. So I'm going to identify factors that explain academic dishonesty. I want to try to understand more about academic dishonesty. And so I'm going to identify various factors, various independent variables that help me to explain that. So by finding these other factors, I can better understand how academic dishonesty works. And that is what I'm going to do, uh, uh, lay out in this paper. And so from the purpose statement, you're able to extract all of your various research questions. In other words, the research questions that I ask are going to help me to identify factors that explain academic dishonesty. And so there are several steps involved in that, you know, calculating the means, the correlations, doing a regression analysis, all that is laid out and is extracted from the purpose statement. So the purpose statement is like a one sentence summary of this is what I will do and then you break it down in the research questions. We will talk about research questions in a future video. Now over here to the right, I have over here a thesis statement and I want to try to tell you some of the differences between a thesis statement and a purpose statement because they're very, very similar in how they're constructed and set up. When you are doing a purpose statement, you are laying out a promise for the reader. That is what a purpose statement does. I'm going to do this. Trust me, you're going to learn about this, etc. When you are writing a thesis statement, you are often taking a position on something. So let me go ahead and read this for you. The cost of taking care of aging parents has, sig has significant housing, medical, and time implications for the children of these parents. And so I'm, I'm sharing with you how taking care of aging parents is difficult. It has a lot of housing, medical, and time implications for the children. And so throughout that paper, if I were to write one, I'm going to share with you how housing, medical, um, and time are wasted, are, are used a great deal to take care of aging pa uh, parents, excuse me. And so that's what I'm going to lay out in that paper. And so you can see that they're very similar but again, it is the context that, it, that determines which one is appropriate. So in the purpose statement, I'm going to be collecting my own data. So I'm going to be collecting my own data. Often with the thesis statement, you're using somebody else's. So this is primary research over here. Whereas with the thesis statement, it's often secondary research. And so this is a small difference and I'm not going to claim that everybody's going to agree with me on this but purpose statements are often associated with primary research, whereas a thesis statement will be often associated with secondary research. In other words, you're gonna spend the majority of your time citing other people's works to support your position that there's a lot of implications for children when they have to take care of aging parents. That's what you're doing. So I'm gonna be citing uh, data that talks about housing. I'm gonna be citing data that talks about medical expenses and of course the time and I'm gonna be sharing examples of that. And so there's a, a major difference or an important difference that students often don't see when they are trying to you know, write a purpose statement versus when they're trying to write a thesis statement. Generally also, again, for those of us, you know, for obviously this is probably gonna be geared towards people going to college, you start in college by learning about how to write a thesis statement. Again, I haven't been to every university in the world, but obviously I've had, I do have a background and experience in this. You learn first how to write thesis statements in high school, and then you start to master it in college, 
And then towards the end of your studies, you start to get more into doing actual, your own research and learning how to develop purpose statements. So what happens many, many times is students bring their skill of writing thesis statements to make purpose statements, and they're not exactly the same. And so if you're a teacher or an advisor, you have to work with the students to help them understand the difference, but it's often difficult to explain the difference because even with a, a purpose statement, you're kind of sometimes not necessarily taking a position, you're making a promise. So again, just to make sure this is clear, if you look at the purpose statement over here, I'm not really taking any kind of a position like, this is good, this is bad, this takes a lot of time, this takes a little bit of time. I'm not really doing that. Instead, I'm telling you, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to identify factors that explain academic dishonesty. The data is going to help to shape my position and really your position comes out more at the end of the paper when you're in your chapter five. That's where you start to lay out more of your position, if you will. So let me see if I can summarize this and we can wrap this video up. So in this video, we took a look at another aspect of the introduction of a research paper, and that is the purpose statement. The purpose statement is a promise that you make to the reader of this is what I'm going to do. Inside your purpose statement, often you're going to include the independent, the in, excuse me, the dependent variable that you're going to be studying, and you're going to probably hide all of your independent variables in some sort of a vague term like factors. This is to help to make the purpose statement short. Now, if you're writing a dissertation or a thesis, you might write a whole paragraph where you just lay out everything. But if you're writing just an article, you want to keep it short and succinct. Also, there's generally some sort of a infinitive phrase in there uh, that you're going to be using to show like, this is the action. This is what I'm going to be doing in terms of your purpose statement. Now, we also contrasted the purpose statement with a thesis statement. Often students who start to do research have experience writing thesis statements. And so they bring that style with them into doing academic research and it's not completely appropriate. A thesis statement is often where you take a position on something and you're often gonna be doing primarily secondary research to support your position in your paper or your essay when you're doing something that involves a thesis statement. Whereas in contrast, when you are make, writing a purpose statement, you are going to be using primary data, data that you pull from the field to try to understand and answer your research questions. So there's sli there are slightly different purposes, <laughs> no pun intended, and this is something that as the advisor, it needs to be explained to the student or um, the student needs to learn and to understand these things themselves. So I wanna thank you for listening. My name is Darren Thomas. I am the Director of Educational Research Techniques. Thank you again for watching and you take care.